Hello everyone. Today we are going to make an energy attack effect. We can see that there are two different energy attacks in the level. One is a blade shape and the other is a sphere. In fact, it can be any shape, because this effect is mainly achieved using materials. Just make sure that the static mesh has the same UV. Okay, now let's make the material. First, we need some assets. Here we use three textures and two static meshes. One is a plane with some bends on its top to simulate a blade. And the other is a sphere with a trail at its tail. Their UVs are almost the same layout UVs, which makes it convenient for us to use them in the material to modify textures. This is all the assets we need. Then take a look at the material. We use time and dynamic material parameters to control the speed rate of the texture. We can see that each panner is connected to time and some of the methods we usually use to modify on the texture. Add panner and distort. Just like we did in many of our previous videos, we can use any normal texture, set different speeds to get more changes. Then multiply the texture by a wave-like mask, still use different speeds, and multiply by 3 to increase the output value, so that the blend effect will be obvious. Connect it to input A, Lerp's input B use the same texture, different speeds, and different UV tiling. Alpha is the default linear gradient, in the V direction. Yes, that's it. Then we multiply it by a mask to make its bottom area, which is the tail of the trail have a smooth transition. Also we need to add a highlight to the edge of its head. Still use texture coordinates to create a simple gradient transition. Since the intensity is a bit strong, we will multiply it by 0.3 to weaken its intensity. OK add them will get the whole shape. Use this as an example. The intensity is too weak, so we can't see it very clearly now. Increase its intensity a little bit. We can see that the top edge, which is the blade area, has a clear highlight effect. OK, this is the shape after blend, and then the opacity part. Use the output value and clamp it to 0 to 1 then multiply it by the alpha channel in the particle color. We can dynamically control the opacity of the material in Niagara, then multiply it by a mask, which is the mask we often use when making trails. Use sine in the U direction of TechScored to make it have a linear gradient at both ends, then add power, using dynamic material parameters to control the intensity of the edge. Of course, a similar step is required in the V direction. Add one minus and power, Use dynamic material parameters to control the length of the trail. The default setting is 5. If we change it to 1, we can see that the length of the trail is significantly increased. After we make the mask, multiply it by this shape, then connect it to Fresnel. And finally connect it to Depth Fade, so this is material's opacity. Next is the emissive color part. We preset two colors, Use Lerp and Texture to blend these two colors, and multiply it by the RGB channel in the particle color. Clamp the output value to 0 to 1. This is the LDR input. Multiply the output value by 10 as HDR tint, so this is the emissive color. Finally, Word Position Offset. Here we use Noise Texture. Any texture will do. Set the tiling to 2, add Speed and Mask, because it's top, that is the head area of the blade or sphere doesn't need obvious world position offset, only need to add offset to its trailing part, so use this mask to prevent the head of the mesh from being affected by the particularly obvious world position offset, and multiply it by the dynamic material parameter to control the strength of the world position offset, and finally multiply it by vortex normal world space, this is our world position offset part. So this is a complete material, we can use this material to make various energy attack effects. If we remove the edge highlight at the top, it can be used as a trail. 
Okay, now let's create Niagara. First we need a mesh renderer, use this plane and apply the material, adjust its settings. Okay, so we can see its static mesh. Let's simply set its color and lifetime. These are set according to our needs. Then add scale color, set the color intensity a little higher. The same for alpha, this will be better. Finally we add dynamic material parameter, time speed is set to 5, world position offset is set to 15, power and length are also set to 5, make the trail part shorter. Ok, let's put it in the level, its direction is facing downward, we can add initial mesh orientation, facing the positive direction of the x-axis, that is negative 0.25. Ok, this should be enough. We can see the effect of the blade-shaped energy attack. We can set its edge here to be more stronger. Use dynamic material parameters to control it. At this time we need to set its parameter index is set to 1, because these four parameters have occupied index 0, enable index 1, we name it edge color. Set it to 0.6. The effect is good. We can modify the values of each parameter in the dynamic material parameters to get different lengths and edge widths. OK, this is a blade-shaped energy attack effect. Next make a sphere shape, copy Niagara, use the sphere mesh. We can see in the preview that its edges are a little missing. Because in the sphere we need the UV as the entire area, so we don't need a linear gradient of the width edge, set it to zero. This is a sphere effect. Put it directly on the level and take a look. Its direction is also a problem. This time we directly use local space, so we can rotate it at will in the level. OK, now we have two energy attack effects, sphere and blade shape. Looks good. So that's all for this video. I hope you like it. Bye.